coming up. Steen struggles to control a suspect. What are you doing? The plain cops swoop after spotting a drugs deal. He's going to be searching on the message that goes out. It's 10 p.m. in Hanwick. Glenn Close cops Graham Phillips and Greg Hill have got their fingers on the pulse of every dodgy deal going down on their patch, especially where drugs are involved. Intelligence is crucial to what we do, just because to get the results, you know, we build that picture up, that, that intelligence picture just doesn't happen overnight. You know, we get intelligence on what cars are being used and ultimately you can build that picture up and build that picture up. It's, it's a slow thing. Sometimes that intelligence might only be good for a very short period of time. You gotta acknowledge that and then react to it. A call's just come in from a PC who spotted a suspicious transaction. He thinks was a drug deal outside the local YMCA. There's a lad standing outside the YMCA. <laughs> Uniformed officers are taking the car the men were in, and it's heading straight towards Graham and Gray. <laughs> Sure, if the men in the car are drug dealers or users. They're recording everything on their body worn cameras. Greg, Red Sands, just sit in the engine off, please. What? You, have you stopped off at the YMCA? No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just got to be the search room unless you see the drugs act. Just come out for me. I'm just going to send you just for the purposes of the drug search. I'm going to post on my police station, okay? What? Why? I'll tell you, I'll explain to you, brother. You just. You just stopped off at the YMCA. Yeah, yeah. No, we're not sure why you stopped off there. So I'm just picking the fence. Okay. We're just gonna do a quick search of the vehicle. And it's a quick search of you and then you get on your way. Is there any drugs in there? You got two. What have you got any drugs in there? Nothing, very. Nothing. You've got nothing to worry about then, have you? No. Okay. Just uh, come off the side of the road. Greg finds a knife in the driver's door. What are you doing with that on the side of you? You know, I'm uh, working sometimes. I want to for food, you know. I'm working, you know. Working? I have break. Yeah? I take from home food. Yeah. It's not a good idea leaving it in your car. Okay. Because yeah, if you have a row with somebody, you can pick the knife up and stick it in a car, can So it's okay. No. Yeah. You can't take it to the side of you. In the yeah. car, can you? That should needs to be kept in the kitchen. Okay. Next to your knife and spoon. Or spoon and fork. The sight of the passenger turns up what appears to be cannabis. What is it? Just a bit of cannabis. Okay, this is not cannabis already. Is that where you just stopped off and got it from there? Uh, I just caught him and I said to him, give me one. Well, we all one of the lads have just been and bought ten pounds worth of weed. Now, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think he's no trace on PNC regarding drugs, so he's going to get a community resolution, uh, and then we can uh, move on to to bigger and better things. Hopefully, they've not caught the drug dealer, but Graham's pleased to get any amount of cannabis off the streets, and has a word of warning for the drug user's friends. To try and explain it. Your car has been seen. What we suspect is when a drugs transaction take place. Because we're good, aren't we? Because that's what's happened. Your mate's gone to the YMCA, driven by your brother, and he's bought £10 worth of cannabis. So that's the reason for the stop. Because we, we're out and we're looking for drug dealers, and you've been to one tonight. Yeah. We're good, aren't we? Yeah. We're good. It's always good taking drugs off the streets. You know, it's uh, it's funding criminality throughout uh, throughout Stoke on Trent. And so you always get that good feeling. It's always a good day in the office when you're taking uh, drugs off the streets and money out of the dealer's pocket. Graham and Greg get back on patrol, leaving the PCs to issue a community resolution order to the man with the cannabis. Okay, to the man with the cannabis, I think.
30 miles south in Burton, Steve is responding to a 999 call with PCK Sparks. Basically, we've had a phone call to say that uh, someone's trying to steal a bike um, and uh, it looks like they might be intoxicated as well, so uh, we're, uh, we're just going to head there to back up. PC Horsfall, who's on his way, left at the top or the oh, yeah. top road. It doesn't take long for the cops to find the motorbike. So the bike yeah. And the man they're looking for, who is asleep on the bike. Oh, he's asleep on it. Fast asleep <laughs> on the bike. When that PC Tim Horsefall arrives, the man wakes up. Is this yours? It's not mine. It's not yours, is it? Do you want to get off in there? Oh, of course. The drunk man's admitted the bike's not his, but the cops need to work out what's going on. Have you got anything on your shit on the moment? Uh, obviously not. No, definitely not. What's your first name? Fuck What's your first name? Check my pockets. Right. Right. So that bike, mate, I'm going to be searching you, alright? Okay. The man appears to have cut his head, and Steve has recognised him. He needs to warn the others that he could be dangerous. Fake off the briefing. As soon as we got there, I instantly recognised him as being the, the same chap that we'd had dealings with before. Okay. okay. The search turns up nothing incriminating, but Steve's noticed damage to the motorbike and records the evidence on his body-worn camera. So this is the uh, two parts off the bike that are currently on the pavement and uh, one further part that was on the, uh, the road itself but it's been moved to the uh, pavement now. It's unclear if the man was trying to steal the bike but the cops have enough evidence of damage to arrest him. No, 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 listen to me. At the moment, because you caused damage to that bike, you're under arrest for criminal damage. You do not stand in the main army defense if you do. Oh, no. And if you do, say, maybe give him a Of course. Come this way, boys. I'll tell you up. Come on, let's go walk. He's gone. I'm not walking. You are. I'm not putting any fur on you. As it dawns on the man that he'll be spending a night in the cells, his attitude takes a turn for the worse. The man's getting more abusive, so Steve restrains him against the door for protection. Okay. Then you keep yourself alive. Okay. 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 The man's lashing out with his handcuffs, and it's becoming a struggle for Steve to keep him under control. The cops have no choice but to blue light the journey to custody. Tim's on standby to help at custody. Stay nice and calm, right? Hey, listen to me. 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 Hey, listen to me
the man still trying to push Steve's buttons. Steve's buttons, I think. You've just not got to let someone wind you up or, or make you rise to anything because ultimately if you were to do something wrong, if you'd reacted and assaulted them, then it's yourself that's going to get in trouble. We're not, we're not, um, we haven't got any exclusion from the Lord. The officers need to move the man's handcuffs behind him for their own protection to put an end to him hitting out. Put your arm behind your back. And it's taking five officers to control him. Stop. Bend your arm. Bend your arm. Bend your arm. The man's got another surprise for the cops. You've got a more surprise. False teeth. Oh, it's false teeth, I think. False teeth. The man seems to have calmed down. And he's keen to get settled in. Okay. Can I have a cup of tea? A what? Cup of tea. A cup of tea, yes. Oh, thank you. Cool. Thank you. And he even seems to be looking forward to his night in the cell. Okay. A separate incident. Including assault and shoplifting, the man was sent to prison for eight weeks and had to pay fines and costs of £750. He wasn't charged with criminal damage to the motorbike.